see who we're looking for. I'll wait for more people to join. Okay, I see Miss Zena. Let me see how I can get her in here. Hmm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, let's see if I can add Miss Zena to the live. Hi, everybody. Okay. Request. All right. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you see me? I am waiting for it to come up. I can't see it yet. It's connecting. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right, welcome everybody, welcome. I'm gonna let it take some time for people to get in and see what's going on. Are you able to see me? I don't I don't see us being live. I don't see it yet, but I hear you. It's connecting. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Let's see what's going on. Let's see. Hmm. Unable to join. Let's try again. Ooh, hold on, y'all. We experiencing some technical difficulties in the dancery. Let's see. All right, let's try again. Let's get it going. I don't know why it's not showing me. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. It's up now. Okay. It won't let me see it when I put the camera towards me. Uh-oh. Do you see it like this? I do see it the way it's connected or currently. I don't. Um... Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to face forward. Let's see. Did it stop again? Yeah, it's currently stopped. There we go. Are you able to see me? Yeah, I can see you now. I can't. Let me see. <sighs> okay. I'll hold, I'm holding it away so I can't see. For some reason, it wouldn't let me see it. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into it. Okay. So, um, I'm going to read your bio. All right? And I'm okay. going to write okay. on you. Okie dokie. So this, okay, so first of all, welcome everybody who's watching to the College Women in Hip Hop History interview. This is Zena Brown. Um, some background on her. Zena Brown is the CEO of Life Dreams Entertainment, LLC. Um, so film and television producer, organizer, promoter, talent connector, um, versatile film television production talents we do uh she's worked with usher ti cj a big boy akon uh who else um well, who else you've worked with ruby d blair underwood um i want to you know produce the movie it's major um what else what else do you want to 
face. Like, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to give us anything? Let's talk about you. <laughs> Okay, so what would be your first question? Well, you know, just like I was telling you earlier, I am so happy to be here. First, I want to say happy Veterans Day to everyone who is a veteran, who's serving in the military, just, you know, happy for their service. And um, my name is Zena Brown, and I'm happy to be here talking with you. So um, I am a um, filmmaker. Um, I am the VP for our organization called NAVFilm, and that's how we know each other um let me see i'm a senior project manager um i wear a few hats yeah. where you want to get in where you want to start talking about okay so let's just start with the first question how did you get started in the industry so how i got started was i used to watch music videos back in the early 90s loved it. i was like i want to make music videos that don't show women that shows women in their best light so by doing that and by having that in my mind, I start. I went to school. I took some classes, went to the school called Ivy Tech in Indiana. Um, and while I was in class, I started working with uh, a man called um, so a man who had a TV show called The Man on the Streets. And this um, uh, person, he took me under his arms and he was a one a one man show. So he did everything. He shot. He, he got his talent. He aired. He did everything. So working with him. I wore a lot of hats, got to do a lot of stuff, and, you know, I just jumped in feet first while I'm in school. So after working with him, he, do, he did, you know, he was a community um, public access TV show. I decided I wanted my own. So I started my first TV show um, when I was in Indiana. It was called Jumping for Jesus, and it was a music video show for, um, it was a gospel music video show. Yeah. And that's how I started. That's dope. Okay, so let's talk about um, the National Association of Black Female Executives in Music and Entertainment, NABFEM. What led you to that? How did you get started with that? So the National Association of Black Females that, um, in Entertainment, it is um, often called NAB Film, N-A-B-F-E-M-E. -E, um, and you put a dot org on there, you'll have our website. Okay. But this is an organization. <laughs> An organization um, that was um, introduced to me by a friend who was also uh, she was a PR she was in media and did a lot um, also she went to Clark uh, uh, um, Clark University um, here in Atlanta mm -hmm. and her name was Dee Dee Cho Chatham and she was a part of this organization called NAB Film and she had just you know been at a one of the I think the first summit we had was up in Canada but she was the network director here in Atlanta and she was building her team so coming from Indiana then coming into Atlanta trying to get my foot in the door meeting new people I thought this would be a great organization of where um, I would be able to network and meet new people and that is, um, you know, how it started. That's good. Tell me about the networking experiences. How was it when you first moved to Atlanta? How was it? Well, moving to Atlanta was awesome because I had lived here once before. I had left, went home, went to school, came back. Um, and I don't know. I am a go-getter. So before I even got back, I was still in school. And I had seen, I don't know where I had seen this, but someone was looking for a PA, a production assistant. Mm -hmm. Um and it was a director who was getting ready to direct um, some music videos for Vicky Wyatt. And he allowed me to be his assistant. So before I even got back, I had made that connection. And um, once I got to Atlanta, um, you know, we were in Detroit and we were, I was shooting the behind the scenes for him and able to assist him. And that was one of my first projects. There was a lady named Kathy Durant, who was a music um, video director back in the early 2000s. She allowed me to start working with her. Um, she was doing a shoot and it was um, a group. I can remember the name. It was called the Millionaire Boys. I don't know if anybody ever heard of them, but that was the video. And we were at... Um, the place is still there. Um, ooh, I can't think of the um, the venue, but it's still in Atlanta. And she needed someone. Um, she had like a call for a PA, and I was supposed to be, you know, helping, you know, shadowing her. But some people didn't show up for her 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 um, her shoot, so I ended up being over craft food services and getting to know people. And you know, I got to do a couple more things because some people didn't show up. So. I was prepared. I was like, I was there to shadow her, 
but then I got some tasks. So that allowed me to get to um, get my feet wet in doing some behind the scenes okay. for a project. That's dope. Okay. So how did that change the direction of your career? Like what, what shifted for you once you got into those spaces and you met those people? Like, like tell me about how it was interacting with people. Well, what changed, the first thing I know I wanted to do after getting my education, because I just finished one of my degrees. And so once I got that, I was like, I got to get a camera because I know if you have your own tools, you are able to, you know, advance and you get more opportunities. So I, the first thing I did was bought a, a DVX 100 pan, um, panorama, uh, what was it? Um, uh, I can't even think of the brand, but it was um, me buying that camera, which opened the door for me. I was able to do shooting for Ryan Cameron, who was on the radio station. He was on V then. And um, I was able to pick up different jobs just because I had the equipment at that time. That's ver that's when I think 1080, and that's a f uh, format that had just came out. So I was booming. I was meeting people. I was able to shoot. Um, I got a chance to work for the AJC doing their red carpets. Um, that's when, um, you know, a lot of publications start coming online. So I was able to um, shoot for them. And by shooting for them, that allowed me to meet so many more people because that, um, you know, I was meeting them because I was shooting for different publications. So tell me, like, what does your normal day as a CEO look like? Because I know you're multifaceted. You spoke on the phone earlier. And you were like, I am multifaceted. I don't do one thing. I do more than one thing. So what is that like for you? Like, what is it like to be in charge of a lot of things? How do you balance? How do you find time for you in time of being a boss? How do you do both? How do you do well, as I was saying, I'm the CEO of My Life Dreams Entertainment. Um, with NAFM, I'm the VP of Operations for the East. And um, like I was telling y'all, also do a, a, I'm a senior project manager for Signal Corporation. Um, and the balance, I don't know, it's okay for me. I have a lot of energy. I enjoy, I think when you are doing things that you like, you find the time and you find the energy. So I don't know what a typical day is. Um, I don't know if I have typical days, but with NAVFEM, we're always planning events and looking for ways in music and entertainment. Um, we're always creating space for um, information where it's entertainment based. Um, it could be um, funding based, or if we're talking about health, we're always giving back and doing things for women um, in entertainment. And men, too. But, and men too. you know. But, you know. You know bring your okay, so tell me how COVID has affected your daily routine. Like, how do you... Um, well, has it affected your daily routine? And if so, like, how do you, you know, go through your day-to-day -day with you know, being VP of Operations with NAB and being in charge of, you know, Life Dreams that you know, trying to do your philanthropic work. How do you find it? Has it impacted you at all? Well, I start early with my, you know, my um, nine to five working on that. And then um, after that, you know, I'm putting on the NAB film hat and um, we are always planning meetings like, you know, the relationship that we have with your organization, the Spelman Women, is helping with one of our new initiatives to have young women to be a part of NAB film. So we're always thinking of ways of how we can partner, how we motivate, how we mentor. Um, so that would be some of the tasks that we do. Um, we also have an arm of the organization that deals with um, women in music, which is called uh, uh, Women Who Jam. Um, those are some of the events that, you know, we were, I work on. Um, with my own um, company and the other type of things that I do, um, that's based on, you know, when time permits. I generally work on projects that have a large team of people so that, you know, I'm one component. I'm not, I don't have to be over the whole entire shoot. Like the last movie that I was able to be a part of, It's Major, which had a woman director. Um, and um, 
So I was able to produce. So that allowed me to do things that I could fit in after my regular, my nine to five. What do you enjoy most about the work you do? Well, I want to also say our youth arm is called NAFM Amplify. <laughs> I see that. I see people who are following. Um, so what motivates me? I am a servant leader type personality. So I enjoy helping and edifying. I love to see women do good. Um, if I have connections or if I have insight, I like to give that to people, you know, when I'm asked and I like to share. I'm all about supporting and motivating women um, to be their best selves. Yeah. I think that's good. Okay, so I got a couple more questions. And then okay. we can... Well, and let me tell you about COVID. So COVID... <laughs> You know, in the beginning, it was devastating. You know, people were like, oh, my God, this is, you know, a disease. How do we, you know, what's going on about it? And, you know, very um, contagious. Um, but what I have seen is how we as humans and definitely as women, we adapt. So we adapt. Uh, we went into this new world, which wasn't new for some of us because we had already been using online and Zoom and WebEx and all these different type of tools, um, what it has done, it has allowed, so some people, um, you know, it brings more people together. It has allowed for more uh, collaboration. Okay. Um, we've been able to reach a lot more people because when you are doing things on Zoom and like we're doing it on IG, people can see it instantaneous, where if you're at an event in a city like Nabfilm, we have 20 um, networks. So, you know, somebody could be doing something in Chicago, someone could be doing something in LA, Shreveport, you know, different places. But by COVID, it allowed us all to come together. So now we're able to, uh, you know, join, attend, participate in everybody's um, event. So COVID, as far as for the organizational note, has been a, a it's leveled the playing field. It is, you know, has caused for more um, camaraderie. And I, I, I like it. I mean, you know, I, I can't wait to get back out and physically see people, but it hasn't stopped anything. If anything, it has helped to elevate and to bring more awareness to where, you know, if you were busy out running around and had to be someplace, you might not be as prone as people have been to, you know, our, our, that are on social media now. Yeah. So it's it's been it's it's been devastating in some ways, but elevating in most of the ways from organizational. I agree. I think it's interesting because you know we take out the travel aspect, and everybody was worried about how to get place to place. Well, you took out the travel aspect, and you just and you said, okay, so now we got to get innovative. Now we have to get innovative. How are we going to still reach people even though we can't be up next to each other? And really. People like personal space anyway. So I just was like, you know what? This is not the end of the world. This is not the end of all be all, you know. Okay. So uh, we've taken, you know, that ugly COVID and, and we made the best of it. So, you know, I can't, I can't, you know, from an organizational point of view, it's been good. And even on my, you know, my, as me as a senior project, that's the way we communicate. And, you know, in fact, Zoom and online is the way I went to school. So, you know, from when me getting my master's back in the early um, 2000, you know, I worked this way. I worked from home. So nothing had really changed personally for me is working with the other components, the other organization. It has allowed us to have more communication. And so I think it's I think it's good. So tell me, what skills do you think are the most important for somebody in your field? What would somebody who wants to go into television production, or somebody who wants to become an activist, or even though, you know, somebody who just decides, I'm a woman, I want to be in entertainment, what life skills does entertainment need? Well, I think one is just 
um, education. So what I what I what I mean about education, it could be formal. Like I did go to college, and I did go specifically for um, the things that I do in school. But it could be certifications, and it could be on the job training. And I think education is good because it allows you to get the skill set to improve upon what you want to do. But it's just like a blueprint to maybe even open your eyes to what is there to do. So if you go into school and, you know, if you're, you're like, do I want to be a director, a producer? Do I want to be a line producer? Do I want to be a grip? Do I want to work in lights? Do I want to work in electronic? Being in school allows you to um, do a lot of things, which, you know, the the program that I did. So it lets you narrow down some of the things that you want. So I think education, some type, whether it's formal college or if it's just certifications or if it's even shadowing and um, doing those things, getting some kind of education so you can narrow down. So I think you need that. I think um, based on whatever um, your personality deems. So me, um, what I partake in or what my favorite position is when I'm working on a project in terms of film is director. I feel like I have a creative uh, mind and eye and um, working with people. So that is one of my um, preferred roles. Producing allows me to do a lot of the work that gets um, everything ready and um, keeping up with the business of the film. So that is a uh, um, something that I can do naturally because I do have project management skills. So that was another like certification that, or, you know, education that I got that I can utilize across different industries. So I really like getting education that helps you across different industries so that you're not, um, that you don't have to just live in one spot. Yes. You can get, you know, you can take different roles and wear different hats. Exactly. exactly. So, I wanted to touch on your um, Level Up Summit, which is a mother-daughter empowerment um, initiative that she has set up in her hometown. Uh, it's basically, you know, she brings people who have left and who maybe haven't left, but women who have left and done different things and been in different fields to come back. And I wanted you to touch on that. I feel like that's important. I feel like not enough people are doing things like that. I want you to talk about that just so we can get it. So, yes, I do have a very community uh, personality. I definitely believe in giving back. And one of the things that me and I had a partner last year that helped me, um, she was a school teacher, and we sat down and we were thinking, and I was like, I want to do something to give back to the brown and black girls in my neighborhood. And I come from a small town called Elkhart, Indiana. It's close to Chicago, maybe 10 minutes from Notre Dame. But in our town, still to this day, there are a lot of roles that these girls do not get to see that are held by black women, black and brown women. So what we, what I wanted to do or what this um, event does, it brings me and friends of mine and other women that I know and some of the women who live there to bring back um, these different type of roles like doctors, dentists. Um, I don't even know if we have a black woman policeman in my town still to this day. I bring back women to come back and talk to these girls and we um, have leadership. Uh, I provide um, where colleges come back. So the girls who are seniors. So we try to, we do a big a gap like from junior high up to high school and we bring back different women um, that can talk and tell their stories to give them insight um, and hopefully, you know, to start like a mentorship program. And it's just so that, you know, a lot of times girls can be at school and they might not achieve or they might not have a role model. Sometimes, you know, it's better now that we have social media. We do get to see information and people in different roles. But in my hometown, it, it really wasn't like that. And it's still kind of not like that. So I just try to collect women and bring them back or ask women in various occupations to come back and talk to the girls and tell them, hey, we walked that hallway just like you did. Okay. But that doesn't limit us. We are all out in different parts of the city and, you know, we want to let them know they can be whatever they see or whatever they want to be. So that's the Level Up Summit in a nutshell. 
And what I really like about it was I, um, you know, I do it for my own money, but I was able to go back to some of my high school friends and people who lived in my city and who were able to help me financially. Um, the next time we do it, I'll be able to get a grant. Um, so I was so elated and so happy with all of the community input. I had relatives, my sister, my parents, um, and my friends who believed in me and the idea and all of them, you know, just felt good about coming back to their hometown to talk to kids and to be a motivator. Yeah, I think that's important. I also feel like, you know, first of all, Christina Brown, humanitarian, and she wears that hat well, okay? And she wears it well. And I think that it's important for girls to see, not even, you know, even if a girl is like, I've never seen a black girl do this. And then she's like, oh, wait. Maybe there's somebody out there who does it. And having that opportunity is important because we don't get the representation. Um, we don't always see somebody doing what we want to do. You know, I, I remember I wanted to take auto body in high school. I wanted to work on cars. And they were like, oh, you want to get your car fixed? I was like, no, <laughs> that's not <laughs> here for. And then I, I decided to not do it because I was like, well, I guess girls don't do this. So I decided not to no, like, I wish that I had somebody be like, no, girl, you could do that. You could do that. So I think that that's dope. I think that that's important. I think it's a great thing that you, you know. Yes. And that's another thing that NAFM does. We believe in mentorship. We believe in um, sisterhood um, and helping um, women to know, to help them with their, you know, insecurities, help build their courage, help to direct them to people that might be able to, you know, each one teach one. Exactly. Yeah. One. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny, uh, Johnny, our president and founder of NAFM, which was created back in, what, 1999, is on um, live. And I just want to give her a shout out. And to all my NAFM sisters, um, Joya, um, Tamala, I see, um, you know, who are coming out to support this live. And a few of them might not be here now, but what's so good about this? You'll leave it up and people can look at it at their le leisure. They can. Okay, so um, if you could leave one piece of advice to everybody watching live, what would it be? That's a deep question. Always <laughs> be able to help lift someone up. Like wherever you go, be able to bring somebody with you. I definitely believe that if we can, you know, if I'm doing well and nobody around me is doing well, that's not fun. But if I'm doing well and I can help another sister do well and she can help another sister or two or three, then we all have a reason to celebrate and party together. So I just want to be able to, you know, give back and lift up. That's, that's you know, what's in my heart. And that's important. Okay, so... Let's let's see. I want to let's see. Let's see if I can find some fun questions. I've been going off the dome now. So, um, all the projects you've worked on, which one has been the one you either has been your favorite or the one you've learned most on the set of? What is which with of anything anything you've done? So. From a film aspect, I would have to say my little very first film called The Life Project overwhelmed with the success, got to do film festivals, um, got to work with people I hadn't met before. That's when you jump straight out of school and you go in and do a project. And um, being able, once again, had to raise my own money to do that um, with the help of, of women. And, and being that I had worked on the set with a few people before, that gave me all of the courage I need needed to do what, to make my project successful. And that's, you know, most of the time, that's what, you know, I, I want to be able to be a, a place where people can come and learn so that they can get the courage to go out to, you know, be the leader that they want to be. Okay. And what other projects have I liked? I like, um, with, with NAB Film, one of the things that I really liked about what I liked and what kind of blew me away is when we had um, one of our conferences. And these conferences, which uh, we'll be celebrating, this is our 20th year um, in existence. So next year we'll be having our 20th anniversary. Um, I like how I got to meet so many different diverse women 
We had women who had worked for Katsinko, which is like a, a ball stadium. We had uh, a Ruby D. We had, um, um, let me see, from singing, um, um, Hamilton. Um, I can't even think of his name. But there were several people that I got to meet that I might have not met, but one of the, you know, by having the conferences, it brings together so many different types of women on different levels, behind the scene, in front of the camera. Um, so I would think that is one of my favorable uh, past events, being at one of those events, meeting the people, um, and just hearing ideas, hearing um, the motivational stories, hearing about the successes. Um, so I'm getting ready for our 20th anniversary next year. And if anybody hears this and wants to be a partner, we're always looking for some partnership. And if they want to be sponsors for this um, anniversary coming up, um, we'll definitely um, check us out. So those are two I can think of memorable. And I guess I was excited about the conference because of the level of, of expertise um, I've, I've attended the Black MBA. I've, I attended a lot of different other um, professional um, workshops and summits. Um, and I can't, I can't say we were right at the level that there that all of those were that I had attended in the past. So and I think another thing I would want to say, network. I, I, I don't know how, you know, a lot of people talk about network, but that is one of my keys. I believe in picking up the phone, calling somebody. We get so caught up on texting. I think sometimes you have to pick up the phone and call people and, you know, get to know them that way. Um, texting is, is fine for, you know, quick things, but picking up the phone, networking, getting to know people. Um, you just never know where it takes you. Relationship building is a must. That's true. So, so what are some networking tips you have? Like some for a person, you know, because networking is hard, especially for people who don't know how to speak up for themselves when they get into spaces. Like that's it's for everybody. So, what's a networking tip that you could give to somebody else? Well, just like you know, um, Shanita, our um, our board member, um, you know. We were wanting to be mentors um, and get our connection back at the universities. And networking is about picking up the phone, asking questions, getting to know people, um, and not being afraid to introduce yourself to somebody that you want to meet. So like with um, Sunita, our board member who called um, back up to um, Spellman. And, you know, reconnected from last year. We had did a, you know, maybe an event or two with you guys. But this year we wanted more of a connection. She picked up the phone and she was like, that's networking, getting to know who you are. If I'm in a room, I make it a must. <coughs> excuse me. I make it a must that I got to meet at least three new people. Yeah. Got to me. Like, I'm going to introduce <laughs> myself and, you know, follow up because you just never know. You know, it's in the it's in the follow up. Once you introduce, get to know yourself, and then, um, yeah, those are some of my biggest tips. I w I want to meet. I really want to meet everybody in the room, but I don't want to walk out without meeting at least three new people. Yeah. Are there any passion projects you see yourself pursuing in the future? Is there anything that you haven't done yet that you like? Well, you know what? I haven't done this yet, but within the next five years. It's well, I'm praying that we get the funding. I'm going to be working with one of my, um, I say homies, one of my friends who's from my hometown who has a production company. And we're going to start doing, he did some books on, I was trying to see if I had the book up here. But he did a series of books of um, black people who were brutally killed um, by the police. And we're trying to convert those over into films. So the story that I'm interested in doing is the Veronica Woodard story. She was a young lady and um, she was killed. And so that's the story I'm interested in doing, hopefully within the next year. And yeah, there's all kind of projects I want to do. I, I still haven't worked with some of the people who I like, like a Regina King or... Um, uh, to Raji P. So yeah, I have a lot of projects that I would want to do and people who I really would love to work with that I admire. So yes, but immediately this series, 
I just pray that we get to do that because I think it's a good time. You know, this is a period of just showing about some stories uh, that we don't hear about because we hear about a lot of stories of people who have passed away. And um, but there are still a lot more that we never hear their stories. Being that she's a black young girl, I wanted to tell this story. So I'm looking hopefully in this next year to be able to do that. So to somebody who wants to get into the entertainment industry and they want to work with movies or they want to, you know, they want to start directing, they want to start producing, what is some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Some equipment you think they should buy or some type of, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to snatch it from thin air. Something they should watch to get information. What is some information, what free resources do you think they should look for? First of all, always Google. Google dot Google University is your best friend. And I think now we used to say you had to do this and that. I think you can pick up a phone and start uh, making your movie. I feel like the best place to start is now and with what you have. I don't I wouldn't recommend going to get nothing. I, I feel like if you have a phone, you have a story to tell. And that's your only mode of 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 that's your only equipment. That's all you need. You can do it on your phone today. I mean, there's cameras, red cameras. There's all kind of equipment that you can go out that's shooting 4K and, you know, to that. And you can Google that. It's an easy search. Anything you want to know is uh, Google University. But I feel like my tip would be just to write a script or write something down that you want to shoot and then go out on your phone and do it. And just like you girls are in school, you partner with your friends. You start all your projects with people you know. That's what I do. I go to the people I know first. And then um, if I have to, you know, pay to get an expert, T, an expert level, then, you know, then I have to raise the money to pay for that. But I start with the people around me. And so my tip was just start where you're at with what you have. Don't make Keep it simple. All you have is all you need. That's all. I like that. I'm going to pin this comment because I think that that's important. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. What? <laughs> okay, so let's see. I'm trying to figure out. Is there anything that you want to say before I open the floor for questions? Um, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm open. I'm open. I'm open to questions. Okay. I'm about to open the floor for viewer questions. See what we got going on. So, who's your favorite woman in hip-hop? Ooh. Right now, ooh. Okay, old school, salt and pepper, and Eve. I like that. <laughs> I, I I like I I I, I like some, some girls now. Um, you know, uh, probably Meg the Stallion. Mm-hmm. And what I like about her, not so much that she shows her body, but I like her confidence that she exhibits. Yeah. So that would be, you know, yeah. who's your favorite? My favorite woman in hip hop right now? Oh, I don't know. I'm an R&B spirit, so I'm really into like Ari Lennox, uh, who else I, do I really like? Kiana Lede, Meg, because she's an Aquarius like me. I love her. I think she's amazing. Um, yeah. What's your favorite project that you've been a part of? I asked you that earlier, but you know, if there's any other projects that you, you know, you you want to talk about. Well, anything. Uh, you know, um, I also volunteer um, with a program down um, by Clark, and it um, helps young kids on the weekend. Well, up until COVID. And I really enjoy working with youth. So on Saturday mornings, I vol I was volunteering up until COVID of helping them as a, a center down there right by Spellman. I can't think of the name of the John Hopkins. John, I can't think of the name of it right now. It escapes me. But I volunteer and I give back my media skills. So they have um, a program and they deal with robotics, um, Lego building, um, coding, and one of the programs is media. So that is what I do here, and I give back to that program. And it's so awesome to see these kids because we train them to be in front of the camera and behind the camera. And just to see 
the many talents that they have at a young age and uh, and just seeing them do well. So I definitely, you know, I'm always trying to volunteer and uplift and give um, talent and experience. Yeah. That's where I spend my time. If there's any advice that you could give your younger self, like I know you probably wouldn't change anything on your path because I think that everybody's personal path helps them build character. But if you could have given any advice to your younger self to make it maybe a little bit smoother for you, do you know what that advice would be? Believe in yourself. Um, don't second uh, guess yourself. Um, the main thing is that courage because a lot of times, you know how we have mental things like, I want to do that or I look like I can do that. But then as quickly as you tell yourself you think you can do it, you might Talk yourself out. quickly tell yourself, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had that where you might tell yourself what you can't do instead of what you can? Man, I talk myself out of so much stuff. I need to stop it. It's, <laughs> it's like you can be your own worst enemy sometimes. You talk yourself into it and you can talk yourself out. So it's hard. So that's that. I, I, I look back and... um over some areas and, and you know i always been an avid you know a, a go-getter and you know i love i'm always on the go and everything but i think i would have told myself in some areas where i thought i'm not where i didn't have the confidence in girl you can do it just go do it that's what i would tell my younger self you can do it there's no limits the only limit is what you have in your mind is a mindset so i would have changed my mind and i would have probably you know, done some other things and just kept, you know, giving myself that confidence that a lot of times we need and we might not get from. Yeah, because sometimes you're not going to find it from the outer world. The world is not a nice place, okay? You have to look in the mirror and tell yourself that you can do it because if you don't tell yourself you can do it, ain't nobody else is about to tell you that you can. You really got to beat it into your own mind, make yourself feel like you can do what you put your mind to. You know, so. I'm talking to myself because I'm like, I had to learn that the hard way. You know what? You can talk yourself out of a thousand things. You can talk yourself into some. You, know, you need to support yourself. So I think that that's important. All right. Okay. Well, I I, I, I just want to say I appreciate your, uh, your uh, you wanting to interview me, me getting to share a few tips. I look forward to growing NAFM Amplify because that's what you guys are a part of. Um we are here to mentor and um, help you to achieve what you ladies are looking to do. Um, I just want to just wish you well. You have all that you need inside of you to do and be the best person that you can be. And for any women out there or any young girls listening, I'm just saying, keep your own faith and have courage and um, believe in yourself. Yes, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this with us tonight. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule. Uh, I want to thank Spelman College Women in Hip Hop for creating this platform. Um, I, I want to thank God every time. Yes, we <laughs> got to. Oh, that's the number one thing. Number Let one. me, if I take it back, anything, the number one thing in my life is Christ <laughs> with God. I mean, Man, how many times I done had to uh, turn to the scriptures? How many times, you know, I might have cried and I cried at him? That is my number one thing. Uh, uh, that's what I'll leave you with, the faith that I have in Jesus Christ and the the way he pours into me of what I'm supposed to be. Um, that is the number one thing, that relationship with Christ, because I feel like I wouldn't have any type of success if it wouldn't have been for the relationship that I have with him. And that's how I really want to leave you. <laughs> and I appreciate you so much. And I'm going to save this live. So anybody who wants to tap back in and look later, it's going to be saved under uh, the Summer College Women Hip Hop page. And thank you so much. Yes, you have a wonderful life. I can't wait to see you when you get back here in Atlanta. Yes, ma'am. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye.